Imagine two vehicles. Okay. I'm imagining. <laughs> Wait, I'm imagining. Imagine two vehicles with the exact same goal. They want to get you from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. But the way they do it is pretty different. They're both hybrids though. So one is going to take you from your point A to point B by utilizing both your electric motor and a gas engine. One could say they're working together. Oh, that's nice. The other one, it's not so simple. <laughs> Instead, it has the electric motor doing all of the work and calls in the gas engine when uh, times get tough. Do you know what I'm talking about, Charlotte? I think it might be series versus parallel hybrids, I something think... everyone's familiar with. I have no idea what those are. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Hey, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to Trunk Talk. My name is Charlotte. My name's Gabby. And this is the podcast where we talk about everything in the automotive industry. And today we're doing something a little bit more technical, but still trying to keep it base level easily understood. And also, you're probably going to leave this more confused than you came in. And th that's OK. And that's always the goal of these episodes. <laughs> No, but really, this topic is a little tricky because mm. there is such a weird fine line and gray area between Definitely. the two, and then there's some vehicles that are kind of a blend of both, and it, it gets really, really confusing. And also, one of the vehicles that we're talking about today, the Series Hybrid, there's not a lot of them out there. No. So it's, I don't know, you're probably not shopping for one as of yet, right? But break it down for me. What is a Series Hybrid? So a Series Hybrid, again, it's a hybrid working in a Series. What exactly no does that way. mean? Don't worry, guys. You'll talk. I'll talk about it. <laughs> so I just want to start off by saying most people don't exactly know how their vehicles work. There's some that are completely car obsessed and you know everything about your vehicle. But working at a car dealership, we see some people come in and they just say, I want something fuel efficient. And yeah. to that, we usually say, <clears throat> okay, hybrid, maybe plug-in hybrid. Or if you don't want fuel at all, there's even an EV. This vehicle kind of has all the benefits of a fully electric vehicle, but there is still a gas engine under the hood. And when I tell you what manufacturer is making this vehicle, you might be a little bit surprised. So with such a high demand and a rapidly growing amount of hybrids to choose from, we should probably talk about this, right, Charlie? I think we should. All right. <clears throat> so there's the upcoming Ram Charger and Ram. Ram, Ram, exactly, as in the, you know, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram retailer near you. Yeah, these, uh, Manufacturers are known for making heavy duty trucks. They're known for their love for green vehicles, yes. their fuel efficiency, superchargers, Hellcats, you yeah. know, Durangos, Perfect. all family of those vehicles. Are very fuel efficient, very family friendly. But they do do trucks pretty well. People love their trucks. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't we love a very efficient truck? that gives you the benefit of electric range, but you still got an engine under the hood. Yeah, tell me about it. So the Ram Charger, it's a series style hybrid. It's not a hybrid like the popular and parallel Prius, however. So a Prius, I mean, you put That's gas like the in poster it. child for efficiency. Yeah, you think of hybrid, you think of a Prius, unfortunately. Anyway, <laughs> instead, this big, heavy, and violently American truck gives you everything you love about a full-size pickup, like towing capacity, payload, everything, even the size but it doesn't sacrifice fuel efficiency. Matter of fact, it's mostly purely electric when it's driving. Mm -hmm. It's completely pure, purely electric when it's driving, actually. This pickup truck is a battery electric truck with a 3.6 liter V6, not engine, I wanna say engine, and I probably will say it a couple times in this video, but they're calling it a generator. They ain't calling it an engine. No, this ain't an engine. <laughs> so it's a gas generator, you guys. It's under the hood where, you know, an engine would be. But this purpose, it's only going to be to generate electricity to power the vehicle. So the vehicle itself is driving only on electricity, but you can put gas in it to, of course, fuel that generator that will in turn fuel your vehicle's mm -hmm. drivetrain. Confusing, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Break it down for me. <laughs> so the Ram Charger is going to have that V6 that's going to power a 174 horsepower generator. That's going to have the sole purpose of recharging your battery, and after that battery runs out of range, the fuel tank will provide enough energy to power the RAM for about 870 kilometers. Wow, that's some pretty strong range. Yes, and that's just from what the generator is creating alone. Yeah, that's so crazy, eh? If you're plugging in that vehicle, you already have that, I guess, free range on top of that. Yeah. I shouldn't say free because obviously you guys are paying to plug in your vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot cheaper, you know what I mean? So a total anticipated range, and this is from Ram's website, of over 1,000 kilometers wow. between charging your That's vehicle crazy. and fueling it up. That is absolutely insane. The benefit, this EV truck around town in stop and go traffic where vehicles are typically most inefficient, yeah, it's gonna be purely EV. 
You also have the benefits of a full EV or even some hybrids mm -hmm. where you can regenerate brake and recapture some of that energy. So to emit some of that waste, right? Otherwise, like on a regular gas car, that would just be energy lost, mm -hmm. right? Um, you still have a generator for long trips, towing, and other truck duties. So if you don't, if you're not familiar with EVs, when you are towing with them, you almost cut your range in half if you're utilizing the full tow capacity. On the Kia EV9, for example, it has um, a fairly high towing capacity, but you literally lose half your range if you are using that, which, I mean, for a long road trip, that kind of sucks. Yeah, right? definitely. I think this is great because if you are, maybe it's for a work truck, you're driving around town all day, you're towing stuff, you're carrying stuff in the truck bed of your vehicle, you don't want to compromise space, which a smaller yeah. pickup truck would do. And that range is incredible. It's seriously incredible. And you'll never be stranded. You know what I mean? You'll find a gas station, I promise you. So it's pretty cool, eh? It's definitely cool. In theory. Tell me about the cons. The cons, okay, so the cons, obviously because this is primarily an electric vehicle in the sense that the drivetrain operates off the electricity, it's heavy. And trucks are never really light to begin with. <laughs> so it's a heavy vehicle, and also because it does have electrified components, it's gonna be more expensive. Definitely. A lot of you guys will know already that electric vehicles typically have a higher price tag than a traditional gas car, mm -hmm. and that's a given but it's still really, really exciting. Um, also, your highway efficiency will be limited. <coughs> Mind you, it'll still be EV, but it's gonna rely on some power from that gas generator, you guys, and it's not as efficient. Electric vehicles at highway speed, so anything over 100 kilometers per, is going to chew up your range quite a bit faster, but still, that's a huge range to go through, and yeah, fairly cheap to plug in, and fairly cheaper to fill if you're used to a Hemi. Mm -hmm. I mean. Now we got that V6, <laughs> so that's pretty good. But I think there's a lot more pros than there are cons. Mm -hmm, definitely. So. I think it's it's always interesting seeing these types of things coming out too, just the tech being adapted, mm -hmm. changed, and also just fitting the needs of what a lot of consumers go for, especially here in North America. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this somewhere else in the world, trucks may not be as on your radar as they are here, but here that's what we see, the bulk of trucks, SUVs, bigger yeah. vehicles being sold. So it's cool to see more fuel efficient uh, variants coming out. Some of the other provinces definitely are more truck buyers than yeah, us here. Yeah, definitely. But even in Ontario, people still love their trucks. Mm -hmm. And hey, I get, I love trucks. But every time I drive Tim's diesel, I cry a little bit when I have to put gas in it. Oh my so goodness. This is definitely a really, really nice truck for, again, if you're working mm -hmm. with it. Some people have trucks just for fun. That ain't cheap. <laughs> this will help it's an out. Expensive hobby. This will help out, yeah. There is no MSRP on this truck yet. And one last yeah. con I want to add is there's almost no series hybrids available. No. There was the Chevy Volt, that's discontinued. But that was a fairly, I don't want to say popular car because you don't see them everywhere on the road, but it was a well accepted car. I think it did car. well for what it was. Yeah, yeah it, was, sure. it was a well accepted car. There's also the BMW i3 mm -hmm. Range Extender Edition. So, again, a vehicle that's mostly electric, but you do have a gas generator mm -hmm. with it. Very, very confusing. It sounds a lot like a regular hybrid, but it's not. So Charlotte, tell me what a regular <laughs> or parallel hybrid is. Okay, so parallel uh, hybrid vehicles or sometimes a series parallel hybrid or is definitely what we're going wait, to be wait, seeing Wait, wait, series most parallel? Of. Series parallel. This now, is where it gets confusing. <laughs> now, when I talk about uh, these vehicles, is I'm kind of talking about them under the umbrella of parallel vehicles. I know that a straight parallel versus a series parallel, parallel does have some differences, and I actually wrote them down just to make sure that I had everything right. So parallel, strictly parallel, electric motor and internal combustion engine provide mechanical power simultaneously, where series power, pa parallel, huh, there we go, is engine and that gasoline internal combustion engine. Um, they can provide power independently or simultaneously. So because they can both do it simultaneously, that's kind of why a lot of people can lump them under just calling it a parallel or even just calling it a parallel series or a power split. So although there are Whoa. some differences there, <laughs> just understand that they, a lot of people widely put them under the umbrella of parallel. Remember when I said you're probably gonna leave here more confused than when you came in? So did we. <laughs> Uh, but again, this is just a working knowledge of these types of systems. So that's kind of a little bit of how they work. Mm -hmm. So think of a regular hybrid vehicle, because largely that's going to be your parallel vehicle. I'm thinking. So, uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> Use that. <laughs> so a parallel hybrid system uses both the engine and one or more electric motors um, to power the wheels either together or separately. And some of the differences is it doesn't just provide a power output, but it also acts as a generator too. 
So it's not an independent generator as what we might see in, you know, a Ram charger. It's going to be your gasoline engine. It's going to be a battery pack. It's going to be your electric motors that are kind of doing those work, doing the work. So what is it like driving a regular hybrid or a parallel <laughs> hybrid or a series parallel hybrid? is this is going to be the pretty classic hybrid experience. Gabby mentioned that one of our poster childs for hybrid um, is going to be the Toyota Prius, which is going to use this system. And so basically as you are driving it, of course you're going to be able to operate um, purely on, sorry, purely on electri uh, electricity at lower speeds or in those more po populated dense areas. Uh, when you're traveling at stop and go. speeds. Yeah, so stop and go. Can you tell I'm running over myself as I'm <laughs> thinking and I'm talking? <laughs> so that's when you're probably gonna be able to pull in from that, um, that battery power, that energy. And then of course, if you're being a little bit more aggressive on the throttle, need more speed, you're on the highway at higher speeds, so that's when your gasoline engine is going to kick in and they can either, like I said, work independently or work separately which is something that is very neat about it. Mm -hmm. You're also, of course, going to be able to utilize regenerative braking to put more power back into that battery to then draw it out. So, of course, as you are slowing down the vehicle, if you're going down a hill, you're going to be able to recapture what could be wasted energy and basically turn it into momentum that is going to be able to power your vehicle, which is something that is always great when it comes to a hybrid vehicle. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can spend so much less time on this because <laughs> this type of hybrid is so much more widely accepted or people but know about it. But some people still don't understand how they yeah. work. For so, sure. Like the point I made earlier, you might have a hybrid but don't really care about cars and mm -hmm. have no idea how your vehicle is working. And you might not even care. And that's okay. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> if you don't, don't worry about it. Hey, if the car is built properly, you don't have you, to worry about it. You won't even know. You don't even you have even to know, know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like these types of vehicles definitely have a lot more pros. Mm -hmm. um, again, just the fact that there is a high variety of vehicle available, whether it be in size, whether it be in manufacturer, almost every manufacturer that has a hybrid vehicle is going to have something that fits this system, yep. uh, which is really cool. Um, again, just the fact that the power of the of the engine can be used to drive and direct the vehicle is something that is great. Um, and you have a lot less energy loss too when you, because you do have the, you know, the system is acting as a generator, you do have regenerative braking, everything along those lines, which is the pros, mm. honestly. You, you know, they're, they're incredibly yeah. efficient too. I was researching some cons and I'm gonna be honest, there's actually not a lot of cons no. out there, especially in re specific relation to a parallel system. Um, a lot of the cons were more so just in general, you know, of course, hybrids are going to be a little bit more expensive, similar to what Gabby said. You are going to require specialized techs to work on them when it comes to servicing. And sometimes people, uh, when it comes to DIY home maintenance, or DIY <laughs> car maintenance at home, that's what I meant, is it can be <laughs> a lot more intimidating. A lot of people don't necessarily want to um, get their feet wet with that type of system and that, you know, that type of stuff, which completely makes sense. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm with you. Uh, so that is probably some of the cons, but again, they're just very general cons. I personally love hybrid vehicles. I think that that is definitely something I would consider next, um, especially over something like a full electric vehicle. I love hybrids. Yeah. Especially my husband. He's got a commute. It's a long commute. I want to save at the pump. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's also great how you can get a hybrid in just about anything. Yeah. Like pickup truck, sedan, you yeah. want an SUV. The, almost every manufacturer has some sort of hybrid for whatever it is you're looking for. I think a lot of people feel more comfortable with them too because it is tech that we have seen a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not, not new. Yeah, it's not new. It's something that a lot of people who are buying cars now or maybe buying their second vehicle, they've seen it on the road. They've seen how it develops. They've seen how it holds up over time. They feel a lot more confident in it than something um, a little bit more like a PHEV or even a full electric vehicle. So PHEV is kind of where we talk about that gray area, right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it's something you can plug in and run purely on electricity, but it's still a parallel hybrid, but it's very similar to a series hybrid. I think that's a separate episode. So shall we quickly kind of, I guess, in simplest terms, explain series versus parallel? Yeah, go for it. Well, a series uses a gas engine or generator, mm -hmm. ram generator, to generate electricity to power the vehicle. So your vehicle's wheels, they're moving off electricity. They're not using that gas. The gas is only to supply the energy source, which is electricity. Thank you. <laughs> Does that simplify it? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about parallel then. And again, I'm going to use my notes again. So electric motor and internal combustion engine provide mechanical power simultaneously or independently. Do I don't it that know what you that will. means. <laughs> 
But both of these vehicles, again, like we started off this podcast with, both of their, I guess, goals is mm -hmm. to take you from point A to point B Definitely. efficiently. And both of them will save you at the pump. Can't say they'll save you much at the acquisition cost. They're going to be a little bit more expensive, but obviously something more affordable will be a traditional parallel mm -hmm. hybrid. Series hybrids, like I said, unless you're in the market for a Ram Charger yeah. or a new or a used, I should say, a Chevy. new to used Chevy Volt, there ain't much. So I hope you like pickup trucks. <laughs> but we can look forward to seeing that. We can look forward to seeing more, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I don't know how popular they will be, but it makes a lot of sense for something like a truck, something that's going to be a little Definitely. bit more, you know, used, I yeah. guess. Not necessarily just your everyday, day-to-day -day vehicle. So. All right. Well, in that sense, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah. Hopefully, no fun fact today. No fun. No. Do you have a fun fact? Nope. No fun fact. Okay, cool. That's a fun fact. Uh, hopefully, you are not more confused than when you came in, but it's anyone's game. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. <laughs> and would you get a Ram Charger? Would, yeah, that's our question. Would you get a Ram Charger? Fun fact, actually. Okay, fun Incredible fact. Incredible name. Love that name. I guess you could say that that 3.6 liter under the hood is the Ram Charger. Wow. Bye, guys. On that note. Thanks for watching <laughs> or listening. Don't forget to like and rate this podcast. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.